Hello guys, welcome to Orcus 365. Join me today to put one of my cat layers on one of my beehive panel mounts. So this is one of the natural colors that I've been working on. I started with gold, this one, then blue-green. So I have this other project waiting for me as well. These three beautiful cat layers to choose from with my choice for this video being this one. It has a very lovely dark fuchsia color so I thought it would go very good on a neutral mount because it can just show off so I bought this in the last official of the year in December from Camila I have um, a lot of beautiful orchids from Camila orchids she has orchids and plants and aroids and um, she will be at Tam Miami as well she'll be one of our fellow vendors so what I want to do with this, it's very happy, very healthy, double spike, new growth, is I don't want to let it sit in my grow environment. You know me, Catleya's mounted. So I'm going to loosen this up a bit. And it is sitting in 100% moth. Not a problem in some places, but here for me, major problem. So what I'm going to do is I have the glove. I'm going to carefully, it's moist, so I'm going to carefully remove media and let all of the wild little creatures that are living in there jump out or anything what i like to do sometimes with this but you have to be careful because i have a collection of these the the sticks that come with the orchids to prop them up when they're blooming or whatever and i like to do this but you have to be careful because you can also break roots when you're doing this so this guy is probably gonna take me a little longer than predicted that usually happens <laughs> You're like, oh, this looks like a quick, whoa, that's a lot of moss and a lot of roots. Okay, so I'm going to loosen these up. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to hose it down. So obviously I'm not going to keep you staring at this that I'm doing for the next five minutes. So I'm going to loosen it up and come back. But I wanted to show you at least, see, as I'm getting in there, there's going to be a lot of dead roots. So those are going to be chopped off anyway, but you want to do it with, you know, a lot of care and i prefer sticking this in there than than my actual hands since i don't know what's been living in that moss right so i'm gonna go ahead and give it a good after i loosen it up you hose it down you don't really have to go through all of this a lot of it will just come off but where it's more compact and tight i like to do this because i don't don't want to like there you go and you know it could be a little bit satisfying or like kind of like therapy i don't mind doing this at all it's just having the time to do it so i just want to care very well for the orchids that i have and make sure that I, if i let her sitting in there and i let it slide although i do avoid doing this with cat layers at this time i have to do it guys because then i'm gonna lose her see these don't rush me those are not sitting those are sitting in charcoal or kiara leka but this one is sitting in pure moss and i cannot allow this to to get into a situation where i'm gonna have regrets because it's a beautiful orchid so i'm gonna go ahead and stop this so i don't bore you with uh with this process i think you you pretty much got the point right so i'll be right back okay so that took a lot longer than anticipated um see this this was after hosing it down. It has a lot of good roots. It's a healthy plant. However, there are a lot of dead stringy roots. I did have this for a few weeks in December, you know, so it did get rained on a lot. Usually we don't get that much rain, but there was a few, there was a day when it didn't stop raining. So I'm glad that I did this. You have to trust your instincts and go against everything that you hear when it's your collection and your garden, because it varies from, from yard to yard, you know, where, how you grow. So if I had taken my time real soon, I probably would have uh, lost this in another month because I was spraying the media and it was stinky. And this has nothing to do with the grower that you buy it. Because remember, if you have 100, 200 Catleyas, you have to keep them in moss because it's a lot of watering, you guys. But when it's a private collection, your personal collection, then... You know, you know how often you water and you know how to, you know, so that's different. So this can happen regardless where you buy it from. You just have to know how you grow. So I'm going to probably keep some of the moss to help with the roots because I'm going to put a lot of seaweed and fertilizer when I'm done because I want to mount it. So um, I have a mini blowtorch that I always sterilize my um, 
scissors and my equipment from orchid to orchid because if you don't that's how you spread things so what i'm gonna do is i don't know what i hurt myself with there oh. i'm gonna cut just the stringy roots you know like this stuff you don't have to cut too much but you can pretty much tell this is the part that i say give him a haircut you can pretty much tell what's what's a goner there then you leave some because new roots will come out of there now i'm not touching anything too much whatever needs to fall out will fall out and what i like about mounting it is i'm going to keep an eye on this root system the only one that i'm cutting off is this one because i do not like how it looks it was sitting in the mush so i'm not keeping that on there i don't like how that looks and nothing else looks like this and that will in no no way will affect it so i'm gonna try Cut off a little bit of the rotting roots or the no good roots. Mm, we don't want that. Anything that looks yucky. So the mounts that I have made have this um, drop in the middle where you can place it and secure the root ball. So I'm going to trim it so it was blooming this way. I'm trying to see the growing pattern. It seems to be growing where it'll bloom like this and i'm going to trim it in a way where it'll sit in the middle and it will be able to crawl in and out and all around so that's the plan goodbye beautiful flower she was a doll i think uh, if i have a picture of her i'll put it in there so you can admire it then when it blooms on this beautiful mount oh my goodness could you imagine oh yuck, Ew. yuck. i'm just surprised julio's not here jumping on the table or knocking anything over right now <laughs> He's out there chasing lizards. I saw him jumping on the pergola. He is a pretty good kitty, though. He can be destructive sometimes, but hey. Oh, found it. That's the yucky stuff I wanted to get out. See? Because this is making those roots just... Uh, it's funny. This one looked like it was going to be a simple one. Boy, was I wrong. It's packed up in there. Ugh. Oh my, the more I get in there, the more I want to cut. <laughs> oh geez, out, oof, yuck, yuck, yuck. Ooh, anything else that looks really bad? All right. I was going to add a little bit of moss, but I don't think I'm going to need it because it's been so oversaturated. And I remember I showed you this part of it because it blooms this way, but it doesn't really matter because it's going to grow all over it. I think I'm just going to like strap it on right here. Let me get the zip ties. So what I like to do is I like to try to pre-run it through the holes and then lay it down. If you can see that. Yeah, you can see it real good. And then put it here. Kind of like, I'm going to show you now. And then you might not want to tighten it up until you're sure that you like exactly where it's sitting. Most of the time, I do two times because we don't want a wiggly orchid. Because wiggly orchid, a wobbly orchid is a dead orchid. I did this really tight. Like, I think it'll be good. I'm going to cut it and give it a shimmy and then decide if she actually looks real pretty on there sometimes i like to do this because behind these dry little um sheaths the bugs like to hide and when i see one that big i just peel it back i want to see that's a new growth right there oh man she is i don't know what do you think i should do another one just to be extra let's see because it's gonna be growing roots down there but really there's no weight i like how she's sitting there's absolutely no wiggling it's very very tight on there i'm leaving her alone anyway i want to keep an eye on those roots i'm not, I'm not gonna keep this mushy yucky one either now i'm gonna work on fertilizing 
seaweed and then if in time i see it that i need to do it i could put a little bit of moss here and secure it with a zip tie or i can decorate it decorate it with spanish moss with natural spanish moss but for now since i'm acclimating it i'm gonna spoil it and i want to keep an eye on the growth so that's what it looks like for now you can hang it anywhere and i hope you've enjoyed um, this quick little mounting video i hope you found it helpful um next time i have a uh, my femme fatale and i was thinking about putting her in my next video on my organic forever basket i call it the forever basket because i got tired of dealing with rotten bamboo baskets and it's not like they're cheap so you have to keep replacing it or dropping it in another basket and then they would get like they would start cracking things would start going inside and i didn't want to deal with it so that's how the forever basket name came to be and I'll show you in the next video. See, I have pre-done holes where you can run your four wires and you can do so much with this. So this is our next repotting project. I hope that you enjoyed it. I will see you soon at Town Miami. I'm super excited. Booth 132. I am working on the most beautiful baskets and mounts. I cannot wait to show you. So yeah, stay tuned and happy growing. And always remember, please be kind. Thanks for watching.